I'm better up. I do the uh, animation for Rainbow Dash Presents. I also do art for Monster Cat and Funky Panda and a bunch of other things. So you've probably seen my work, or maybe you haven't. So introduce yourself. I am, hello, my name is Crikey Dave. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, random person. Uh, I am, I was, as I said, I was the artist who did the two animations for the promos for this year's uh, Chris Mountain PonyCon. Um, I also did the Does A Thing series, like Spyro Does A Thing, Crash Does A Thing. Uh, I did a Champions League of Legends video recently. Uh, I also did the two uh, Minecraft Logic and Five Nights at Freddy's Logic. And um, yeah, I've been animating for most of my life and for some reason I've not stopped. Yet. Um, Keep, keyword, yet. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, I am Hero Strain, and I'm a source filmmaker animator. I, yeah. Do you have your yeah. uh, animations that you can show to people? I do, yeah. Have you shown it to people already? Yes, yesterday. Did they love it? Yes. I, I did they cry? Did. Was it amazing? No, no, no one cried. No, cry. no, but good cries. It, it, it cries because of happiness. I cried. Oh, you cried. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, what are we gonna play? Oh, we're gonna watch the thing. First, we're gonna watch his thing because he actually was flipping amazing and a lot of other words <laughs> I could say bad about him. Awesome. Dave was incredible. Dave was actually incredible. All right, you guys ready for this? Yes. Are you ready for me to not blow your ears out? Should Please. I duck down so you can see? Rest! How goes the planet of the con? Well, great. We already have the Radisson book for July 17th to 18th. And hey, are you gonna fix that wall? What about the guests? Oh, well, we're bringing back certain special guests such as Solarak, Two Red Cosplay, Laser Poem 3, Boggle, I mean, Bogal Bronies, Kawaii, Canterlot Radio, Crikey Dave, and the super talented artist, Giggles. And have you told every pony about our Indiegogo campaign so ponies can donate all their bits? Oh, right, I should probably get on that. Oh, man, we've got so much work to do, and it's already summer! Wait, no, it isn't. Look outside, it's winter, see? But what? But how? You, you just blew through that window, and there's there's snow! So please, go to our Indiegogo page and donate all your money, and help make this year's Crystal Mountain Pony Con the best one ever! Do it now! Now! Right now! Go donate your money! Now! No, don't you see it's snow? I'm literally eating snow. So he posted that, he showed me that picture of him holding snow Cancel. with it in his mouth, and I was like, the hell is that? Snow. What are you doing? It's, it's, it's snow! I'm like, good. How Where is your mind going to? I'm interested. I thought it was. Hey, like so here's the next animation. Or something. Hey! Chill! I got this! Why does she suck so much? What are you doing? We have to make sure we put our best hoof forward for Crystal Mountain Pony Con. After all, we are headlining. Did some pony say Crystal Mountain Pony Con? How do you even keep doing that? And, and wait, where even are we? Am I dead? We're at the Radisson in Salt Lake City, Utah, of course. Where everything is pretty rad sun. Why does she suck so much? Like I was saying, we've got music, panels, and special guests. Uh, and cosplay. Please stop. Followers can purchase their badges now. Plus, we have codes on our website to give you a discount for your hotel. I, I just, nothing makes sense anymore. I'm, I'm done. I'm out. Is this the personal mount unicorn? That's actually a <laughs> So what do you have to say for yourself? That's, that's her voice. It's really bizarre that. hearing people quote it back to me. Because <laughs> I, you know, it, because this stuff, like, it seems like so short, but to do anything like this, like, this takes, you know, weeks and months of work. Um, you know, in between other like projects and other things you have to do. So naturally, I hear these lines over and over again <laughs> to the point that it either, either I loathe them or I become insane. <laughs> or a combination of the two. So it's even more bizarre that I'm hearing like people quote it and I think like, I'm, I'm hearing things. Huh? <laughs> oh no, the voices are coming back, no. They said the pills make them go away. Uh, it didn't work. All right, so... Um, this is the animation panel. We've already watched some animation. Uh, let's go ahead and just take some questions. Uh, uh, we have three incredible animators, or two incredible animators and myself. And uh, the fraud. And, and, a, and a fraud, a hack fraud who doesn't even do real animation. But yeah, so uh, yeah, go ahead and ask your questions. You can direct it at any one of us or all of us, and we will answer your questions. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you
Is that a beat? <laughs> I don't see that being particularly difficult because they move in waves. So. Hey, so quick Copy question. Did you still. post the CNBC video thing online today? No? Okay. Um, so I'm going to play one of his most popular animations, then we're going to get uh, uh, Ryan's, and then if, would you like to show everybody that again? or? It's up to you, you don't have to. Thank you for watching my laptop, which is right on the side. Okay, well, you, okay then we'll, we'll just start here, and then if we can pull up one of your, your previous ones. All right. So everyone watch this. Everybody judge Dave really hard. Just okay. remember, <laughs> the internet does it every day. Everything. That's weird. <laughs> really cool, but that's. I'm glad, so. Yeah, so, I'm, so a lot of people have seen, I'm seen it then. I'm gathering. No, but again, let's. In case anyone doesn't know, this is his first convention, like, ever as a guest. So that, that's, that's probably why it's weird. Because if you've been anywhere else. Anywhere else. My, my only interaction with the public is through the occasional YouTube comment, like, what? Blood is not a vampire. And I know he's not a vampire, he's a hemomancer or a blood mage, but for some reason people need to tell me that every day. <laughs> and just so you know, I know, it's a joke. So what was the hardest part? I'm just going to answer the, ask the most obvious question. What was the hardest part? I mean, there's a lot of really specific lush colors in there. I mean, like, what, what in was this one. In this one, yeah. Yeah, oh, well. There's no lip syncing through the whole thing. In. Well, that was, that was one big plus. <laughs> but it, uh, I had to make up for that with a lot of animation. So, I mean, this one was... This was just a fun idea that just took me, I think, uh, anywhere between, I think it was like five to six months, just on and off in between like other projects and other stuff I had to do, such as the pony videos as well. And um, I think just the challenging part was just um, uh, just trying to use After Effects more. I was trying to use like more camera effects because normally I would do it just straight into Flash and doing anything in Flash with any camera effects is <laughs> insane. But, um, but After Effects, it was more neat because I could do camera effects, I could add lens flares, which I didn't thankfully add any, but like lighting effects and stuff that made it more, you know, just a little bit more nicer. And so, though, it was, it was challenging to make, and, but I'm glad I made it. I mean, you know, just for the, uh, the, the sheer fact of just making it, just for fun, because, you know, I, ca I came up with this idea just by walking, just walking along, just listing my, my iPhone at the time, and I had the DuckTales team playing, because that's what you do. When you're walking the streets of Brisbane, you're just going, yeah, DuckTales theme, yeah, okay, cool. Wouldn't it be great if it League of Legends characters? Do you really yeah. walk down the street thinking of a DuckTales theme normally? Because that's something that hasn't happened. Not thinking, mind. it's actually, in, like, it's on my iPod. Oh, okay. Oh, my <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, right, yeah. Good. I'm not just sitting there, like, you know, just going, like, you know, da -da 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 -da. No, like I, got all, I got all kinds of theme songs. I got the Doctor Who theme song. I got every theme song. On. It's actually playing on like the intercom, like in the city. It's yeah. Just, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was walking. I was walking the streets of Brisbane when suddenly the Ducktales theme played, <laughs> and I knew at that moment I had to make a cartoon, <laughs> and so I did. Then I know we have a large age, you know, group of audience here. Uh, who doesn't know what Ducktales is? Wow. Oh, we, we actually oh, got two people here. Other than the two people, yeah. bravo for us knowing. That's yeah. 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 Who wants to explain DuckTales? I think the animator who animated the song relevant to DuckTales. <laughs> well, uh, Duck, DuckTales was a 90s cartoon from, from Disney where uh, starring Scrooge McDuck and his uh, three nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, from the, you know, Donald's nephews. Um, they lived with him and they had wonderful adventures solving mysteries and getting more money because that's what rich people do, apparently. And Scrooge McDuck would jump around in his money bin and... That is true, we do that a lot. Yeah. 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 
Uh, I always, always wanted to do that though, though every time I thought that that would be painful, but it looks fun. <laughs> it looks fun. Cartoons, man. Cartoons. The Family Guy sketch kind of made it real. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, anybody have any questions for these uh, brilliant animators? Lots of questions. Let's go purple in the back. Yes. <laughs> That was a great question. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we are finalizing a script right now uh, for the next one, and uh, we're going to start doing voice acting soon and animation soon. So, uh, yeah, be looking forward to that. Uh, I don't know. I don't have an exact ETA on it because these things are mysterious and how long they take and how much other work I have to do in the meantime. But uh, yes, we are going to make another Rainbow Dash Presents. We are coming back. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, vinyl scratch in the back. <laughs> Wait, everybody quiet, I can't so hear. Sad. Including you, Sean? Shane? Uh, start to finish? Is this a question for everyone? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, usually um, I start with the script and I'll go through the script and just kind of like either in my head or like on a piece of paper draw out uh, kind of like a storyboard of like how I want to arrange the shots because uh, one thing when you're doing like a narrative story you have to um, like the way you lay out your shot is very important because it contains all the information that the audience needs to see in order to um, understand uh, what's going on and stuff like that it's very important Okay, and uh, it's something you just have to pre-plan that um, you have to plan where the characters are standing in a specific scene so I always try to like pre-plan that so that when I go in to do the more finalized drawings I have uh, something set up. Um, I use, uh, you asked what are the steps, I guess I use um, uh, Photoshop a lot to draw the characters, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using Photoshop as much anymore, but uh, uh, if there's uh, additional animation that goes on, or like if there's a walk cycle and I want the character to move around, I usually draw the walk cycle and uh, do most of the animation in After Effects, it's just a particular choice that I do. And uh, just combine everything, and, and that's that's basically the process for me. Uh, my process, um, basically, like as I said before, it's came up with an idea. Sometimes I've been commissioned for ideas, so sometimes I collaborate with another who's like wants to do a script, such as the the, the pony videos. Um, and usually from there, like I start like through Photoshop or through drawing. I do like concept art, you know, what the characters look like, get a basic design, so I know what to keep coming back to. Um, any backgrounds I need to use or Sort of the general feel of it, and then I do it like storyboards, animatic, um, usually which I show like clients or just to myself, so I, I've got a reference to know what to work with. Then I put that into Flash and start doing individual scenes from one to a billion. And uh, once once I get all the assets together, usually I have, like I have a background separate. I have all the anything has to move separately, like a character separate, foregrounds are separate, and then I put it all together uh, into After Effects, make it look all Flash and nice, and then make it look like pretty much paste it over the top of the animatic so it looks like the same film but now it looks like a film and once from there I just export it and either upload it or pass it off to people that I need, need to see it first for approval and then from there a cartoon is formed. Since like 99.9% .9 of what I do is all music videos I listen to the song on repeat like X million number of times and just do a mental storyboard then I go into a source and just cut it, cut the clips however I want to cut it, fit the music or whatever. It, I don't do storyboards other than the mental ones because I can't draw very well. <laughs> so that, that's basically my process. So it's all, so it's all, in, your, all in your brain, this process. All of you. Ah, genius. It's also good to hear that you don't need to have like drawing skills to be an animator. You can do animation if you just want to do animation. Great. The good thing about storyboards is more, it's good for you, but if you don't need it, you don't need it. As long as you can visualize it and do it, it's mainly good if you're working with other people, so at least they understand. So if, you, if you're collaborating with others, and either they're animating it, or they're, they're doing something for it, like maybe someone's doing music for it, it's always good to storyboard it for other people. If you yourself don't need it, like if you're just making it for yourself and no one else is involved, then you can just, you know, just, just use your head. Um, it's good to do little sketches anyway, even if it's not necessarily a storyboard, just so at least, okay, how would that scene work? Okay, draw a character here, background here, just a vague idea. I would recommend it, but as again, it's not necessarily everyone's process, everyone's different. 
other people can do it off the top of their head, and some people can't. It's, it's up to you, really. And uh, like also, like you kind of mentioned, if you're doing it, like if you're doing animation for a client or someone, uh, it is really good to do storyboarding because once you've already animated it, it's really hard to fix things. So um, if you send them an animatic and they like approve on the animatic in a general sense, uh, it'd be and or they can make uh, tweaks and changes before you actually do any animation. It'll save you a lot of stress later on because changing an animation is a pain in the butt, especially since it takes so long to do. So keep that in mind. All right, uh, more questions? Green shirt, huh? All right, um, uh, this one for Craig Dave. Um, yes. Um, what, what, what's your favorite piece of animation that you made? Favorite piece of animation that I made? Yeah. Oh, give me a tough one. Uh, I love, I love all of them for their own ways. I mean, I think my absolute favourite of them, I think, has been probably Spyro does a thing. Um, mainly because it was just, it was such a fun collaboration project. Um, it, it, the fact it did so well and people loved it and, you know, um, yeah, like work, working with um, Shady Fox as well. Like, he, you know, he did a really great job with Spyro. Um, having him play off money bags as well, just, just the reaction of that and, you know, that wasn't very everyone. Wasn't Eve for everyone. <laughs> wasn't Eve for everyone, yeah. <laughs> but um, it, no, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I suppose the beautiful thing is every cartoon I've ever made, I always put everything into it, you know, and, and while that's my favourite, I enjoy them all because I think that's something I always, uh, always try to keep in mind for everything I do. Like, I always be passionate about what I'm doing and... This moves, you lied, you are an animator. <laughs> You lied. Animation for like one second. Did you see it? There was animation. And now it's gone. It's she laughed at one moment. It was like, ha ha ha, that's animation. Ha ha, he lied. He's an animator. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, like Spyro was my absolute favorite. And um, but definitely like everything I've ever worked on, the like, champions I really love doing. Um, all the other does things as well. Even the Harlem Shake one. I <laughs> <laughs> has, has everybody seen the Harlem Shake video he made? Oh, do, do we need to play it? We need no. to, we need to oh, play yeah. it. Uh, we need to play it right now. Yeah, yeah. No. There's one comment, one comment I'm gonna make real quick, and that is that this is probably one of my favorite scenes I've ever done. Because oh, really? we're talking about college and money and drop it was just one of those things that I'm it's sure not, it's yeah, it's just the it's, character standing there talking to his parents. And that's the point. I mean like the writer, I'm giving him yeah, I'm yeah, giving Greg, kudos to, to Greg then. Yeah, Greg is fantastic. I absolutely adore his writing. He is like a freaking genius when it comes to like just writing characters and just having two characters having a conversation being the funniest thing ever. Oh, Street Fighter does things. Stop that in. Street Fighter does things. And now for something Not that I want less genius. <laughs> you're, you're Captain Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is the hammer? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. It's like, oh, God. So I've got to ask, why? First off, why did you choose this artistic style this time, without the black outlines, without outlining your character? I just wanted to try something different. Because okay. every, every other one I had outlines to it, and like as I said, I made this in Flash as well, mm. and I just thought maybe this would look good, mm. and I felt it, it did pretty well. I mean, it was it was a neat sort of like just because everything I do is like experiment half the time. It's like it's like Pixar. Like you sort of come up with what can I do this time, mm. or what can what can work this time, and. I haven't come back to the style necessarily because I haven't really done anything that I feel would really work with it. But just for this, it was just an experiment to see what happened. When are you going to make a Harlem Shake 2? The Gangnam style? <laughs> <laughs> Street Fighter does a thing too. Gangnam style meets Shia LaBeouf. Oh! Are you kidding? Comment on not liking memes? Never mind. It's a different, different day. Well, now I have to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alright, so next question. Of all of these, what was the easiest and the hardest to animate between all these characters you've just animated on this? Probably Akuma doing a little sort of <laughs> bizarre dance on the side here. Because <laughs> most of them at least are like cycles, you know, like you got, you got Saget up the back just doing like that. 
and you know, and they, most of them are like loops and so forth. But yeah, Guki Akuma is the only one that's like he's got the full animation of like this flailing. <laughs> but I just I love the fact that I just kept him going. Because yeah. <laughs> he's Guki, he doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> he's having a good time. Well, he can't see. He's broken. He's broken. <laughs> Up. He can't see her. <laughs> why, is it, why is everybody stopping? What's going on? <laughs> it's a new movie's developing. He could kill you with a thought while dancing. Does anyone have any questions for these guys? Wow, you get why did you make this? <laughs> why did you make this? I've been wondering that for many days. Post <laughs> question. Oh, so that was your favorite animation. Why everyone else? I think my favorite animation would be the near end, or most of the Changing the World for You video, just because like, I had Nightmares, Nightmare Moon's mane going all crazy there, done entirely in After Effects. Nearly destroyed my computer, <laughs> poor thing. But that, that would be my favorite animation so far. And. Uh... My favorite animation is probably Bittersweet. I think it just has the best, just kind of, like, overarching story. It felt, like, really good. It also has, like, the newest animation, so it's my best. But, uh, um, I mean, I've done smaller animation since then, but uh, as far as Rainbow Dash Presents goes, I think that one's my favorite, so. Has, has everybody seen this uh, video he made? No. Yeah, well, why don't you first explain why you made it, and then we'll, we'll play it with sound. Okay, uh, a modeler in the SFM community called Bearded Doom Guy mm -hmm. made a new version of our spike model and he made an IK rig for it, which is a rig that allows the feet and hands to stay in their, stay in their place in space as you move the pelvis and chest and everything around. And he asked me to make a video for it and I did. <laughs> that, was, that was quite the most brilliant explanation. I did. All right, let's let's play. It. Was it really good to work with that model than the, with the arcade rigs and everything? It was definitely a lot easier, like for that that little tiny walk cycle, because you know if you move the pelvis forward, the feet will go forward too. But with the IK rig, none of that happens, and it just like the feet stay where they're supposed to stay. No floating or sliding or moonwalking. <laughs> if I buy one spike, do I get a second spike free? There are three spikes, and you buy two, you get a third free. Buy it. Buy it now. So any new questions? Yeah, any questions for us? Uh, uh, question for Petty Rep. Uh, uh, okay. So when, how, what's your process for choosing a fanfic for Rainbow Dash Presents? Um, that first? is usually not strictly my decision. That's usually Greg because he's the writer. So it's really whatever inspires him. And uh, I usually, usually uh, he chooses, but uh, there are occasional moments where like we both decided like this is definitely the one we need to do. Like when we did Bubbles, the most logical conclusion is to do Cupcakes next because that was just, at the time, that was the biggest fan fiction uh, that everyone was talking about. Um, eventually, uh, Milo Dashi came out and was like, we need to do this one next because it's just, oh my gosh, this one needs to be, this needs to be parodied. And he's like, mm, yep, it does. So it, it's basically, I bas it's basically his decision, but um, I do have a little bit of input on that. And uh, I've had a little bit more input on the script now too, as well, just to kind of, uh, just to help like with this transition between script and animation. It's good to have a little bit of collaboration going on there. Uh, that way I can get some qualifiers and figure out, you know, some details of the scene that I need to know. Uh, camera. Alright, so I'm going to draw up some, uh, 
irritating memories for you. Okay. But, uh, uh, this is specifically for. Oh, I forgot your name. Or Ryan, whatever, if you want to be less formal, or more informal, whatever. <laughs> Mr. Petrie. <laughs> sure. Um, but, anyway, uh, what, is, what, what would you say would be the sheer number of people and suggestions that are made, people that make suggestions to you on what? Uh, like, what? Uh, well, I mean, the the comments section is flooded with suggestions of like, what's the next? Ready. Like, you should do this one next. You should do this, and uh, I mean, they they don't really influence the decision because ultimately it's whatever inspires the like, you know, creativity in a good episode, basically. But uh, I mean, there are times where like. Like, I guess, like, when we did Bubbles, everyone was like, you need to do cupcakes next. I'm like, yeah, we're, we definitely need to do cupcakes next. It's just logical. So, I mean, uh, like, whenever there's a big fan fiction that gets popular, everybody's like, oh, I really want to see an RDP of this. So, that's usually how that works. Uh, so, yeah, I, that, that's basically it. How do you guys feel about the plot versus the anti-plot? I noticed in anime overall, there's a larger version it kind of mimics like Phantom of the Opera where the book was so poorly written that it's an anti-plot. Where you have lots of plot holes. And you find this funny little pony series. When you work as an animator. Uh, like, wait, so anti-plot means like it's... Well, like uh, a good example is uh, uh, Love Plus. It's a huge awful plot holes. People would fill in with Phantom. Same with yeah. Pony Plus. When you address this as an animator, you become a uh, well, that's more of a script thing, but I mean, well, there are points where uh, where I will add things into the animation because I know that it would be a little confusing if I miss it out. Just like reading it as a script, I'm like, this is kind of confusing, but I could clarify it by adding something to the scene, like uh, physically. If that's is that what you mean, like how to. I've noticed in animation altogether, getting to be larger and larger Right. So, well, that's that's um, that is more of like a script writing thing, I and mean, like it, when it comes to the plot, that's more of a script writing thing. But uh, I mean, um, like you're asking what what's our opinion on like when people fill in the plot yeah. holes with their like fan fiction yeah. and head cannons. Um, I mean, I, I think that's I think I think it's fine, but uh, I think sometimes people value their head cannons a little too much, and they will get angry at the writers when they're trying to be uniquely creative and coming up with something that hasn't been come up with it. Um, uh, is this something you guys want to talk about? Well, I mean, um, I suppose, uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, um, but I suppose it's, from what I sort of, I mean, most of the stuff I do, I tend to just do, like, as I said, like what the writer says, or what I sort of feel. I mean, for most of my work, it, I'd like to think most of the stuff I do is, is self-contained in what it is and it just tells the story for what it is. If people want to expand upon that or add their own little flair to it, that's fine. I've, I've seen people do fan fiction of like Spyro does a thing, which still makes me giddy. Because <laughs> the fact that someone went out of their way to actually do fan, like some kind of like fan drawing of anything I do, I'm like, thank, thank you. And, um, but love yeah, people love it. <laughs> but I mean, in terms of like, yeah, like, like anti-plot or things like that, I mean, I, I suppose I tend to try to not do much at least with my own stuff, too much um, lo like plot holes or anything that's too, you know, I mean, whether whether there are intentionally, I don't know. I mean, a lot of stories I write tend to, I like to think it makes sense in itself. And if people want to expand upon that and add their own, you know, what's this? what did this character do during this time? Which, you know, I'd like to think of my stories make sense, like they're off doing that, but they can expand upon, well, what specifically happened? Did they go to the store or did they go to the pizza store? What did they buy? What did they buy? What brand of gum? How much did it cost? What brand of gum did they buy? <laughs> Fan fiction coming soon. The pizza store or the Spyro gum. Spyro buys a pizza. Spyro buys a pizza. What did Money Mings do after he left in the lava? He died. <laughs> what was behind all of the doors? What was behind all the doors? Was and it another locked door? How, it, it was, was probably, probably <laughs> another locked door. Yeah, it's money bags. Of course it was another locked door. <laughs> yeah. A thousand gems? <laughs> a thousand. Ugh. But yeah, but I mean, yeah, for most of my stuff, it's, I like to think it's self-contained. I, I try not to do too many plot holes. It is kind of hard to have a plot hole in a four-minute video. Or at least a, it's kind of hard to have a plot hole that ruins everything in four minutes. 
Well, I mean, because because they're so short. I mean, if they were a lot longer than yeah, it's probably more. Yeah. It's probably more easy to have you know, whether it's accidentally or intentionally. In a four-minute video, the only way I figure it could have a plot hole is that nothing happens, and you think, why are they standing there? Or a character just walks in and goes hi, and then leaves. And you think, well, what, what was that about? What were they talking about? Find out in the fan fiction about why they went to the pizza store. It turns out it was just somebody who paid to have a cameo. Yeah, yeah like, oh, what, what Dave said. It's just like, it's really hard to make plot holes in a four-minute video. I mean, I can't say I haven't done it before, but you know, like with that with that Spike video. Twilight's house was like missing half of it. <laughs> Why was Spike standing still and the camera was rotating around him? That's weird. I don't understand that. Can you have can you explain why the character of Spike would stand still as the camera pans? Where did his glasses go? Where did his glasses go? Magic. Where did his glasses come from? Magic. That's did, an answer did, to the universe. How did magic. Twilight get glasses? Where did magic I, come I need from? a fan fiction <laughs> explaining this to me. Or else I won't I won't understand your uh, please direct all questions to our uh, complaints department. I will do so. But yeah, um, I guess, yeah, I, I do, I like that question because uh, I do think about that like, um, like I try not to have too much of a headcanon when I'm watching a show because I want the writers to surprise me and just, uh, like, I want, like, uh, I really like this show, uh, Bojack Horseman, and uh, the second season just came out. And uh, I found the second season to contain the right amount of things I wanted to see and also the right amount of things I didn't know I wanted to see. Like, did I know I wanted J.D. Salinger to direct a, uh, a celebrity talk show? I didn't, but now that I've seen it, I definitely am glad I, I wanted I, I didn't know I wanted it, but I do now. So, I mean, that's the kind of thing I like letting the, the people who are the creators be creative and surprise me with new ideas. So I try not to... Uh, impose. Uh, I try not to impose my headcanon and what I want to see onto the show. I try to keep it light. So I think that's that's what's healthy for uh, creators, in my opinion. So more questions. So for another question for all of you, um, when you first read the fanfic cupcakes, what was your initial reaction? Um, I'm like, well, this is typical internet thing, turning something that's completely harmless into something horrible and disgusting. I mean, I wasn't really all that shocked by it because I was like, yep, that's what the internet does. So I'm like, okay, this is, and it's also pretty unrealistic and silly that a, a character would stay alive while all of these things are happening to her. So I'm like, this is just dumb, but okay. I've actually managed to avoid reading it or seeing anything related to it somehow. I've heard so much about it. I've, I think I briefly saw a YouTube video, I think, that sort of teased a bit of it, but I was like, nope, 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 nope. I mean, right out of that? Yeah, right out, right out of it. So I've managed to actually avoid it, but I know it's supposed to be like horrible and so forth. It doesn't make any sense why. It's, it's just like the Rainbow Dash Presents version. It, it, it's, it's just like the Rainbow Dash Presents version. It's actually a, a love story between, between Rainbow Dash and uh, Pinkie Pie. That's, uh, that's, that's actually it. what's that? And it explains like why they went to the pizza store and got gum. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll have to read it then. I have to find out. <laughs> I've never read it, but I've seen plenty of videos to get the idea, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like there's not really much plot to it. It's just, um, uh, uh, Pinkie Pie picks Rainbow Dash's name out of a hat because now it's her turn to sacrifice to the cupcakes or whatever. Cupcake gods. Because she has to make her cupcakes out of ponies, of course. You can't just make cupcakes out of, you know, things that cupcakes are made out of. You gotta make them out of living people that you murder in your basement. And then the rest of the fic is just gory descriptions of how she destroyed, ripped Rainbow Dash apart. So that's, that's the, that's, that's all you missed. So, that's that. You have a question? Uh, since you do SFM, do you do an NFA video? If you do, how do you do it? Uh... Usually I work at it shot by shot going on from the beginning to the end, you know the I have like the first half done, but the second half hasn't even been touched yet and um, Like usually for like complicated shots. I'd uh, Do a little animation blocking. That's where you just the characters in this position and they click over this position This position it's kind of like an it's it's similar to an animatic, but it's more like this is what the animation is going to look like when it's finished 
from pose, pose A to pose B. So I don't do any real animatics. It just, I do it on a whim. Uh, do you, or you can give, keep it, or actually, yeah. Uh, do you um, animate the body movements first and then do the mouth flaps, or um, or do you do them both at the same time? I usually do the body first, then mouth flaps. If, if it's a uh, lip sync, if it's specifically, if it's just facial animation, then body comes first. But if it's actual lip sync, then I probably do them at the same time. And you at least have a script, right? Sometimes I write a script. You know, usually my scripts are just the lyrics to the song I'm using. You just print out the lyrics, that way you have the lyrics on a piece of paper. He's like, look at my script, I wrote this. <laughs> Alright. Um, you. So, do you, do you tend to do the backgrounds or the characters first? Oh, backgrounds first. Well, me specifically, backgrounds first, because I need to know what the environment that the characters are interacting with, and I imagine that's, is that the same for you, Tim? Similar, yeah. yeah. I mean, because uh, the characters, like the animation of the character, like it can be very affected by the environment that he or she is in, and uh, like, because they can use props and stuff in the scene to kind of make the character movement and dialogue more interesting. So it's, it's uh, always good to have the, the background done first. It's a similar basic process, yeah. It's usually good to do the background first. So yeah, as you said, like to <clears throat> understand how the characters interact with the environment, how they're affected by the lighting, for instance, how um, uh, how they interact with the scene. So usually, yeah, that, at least for my process as well, like I'll usually do the backgrounds first, depending on, um, sometimes I might do the animation first, depending on the scene. If it's too, like, if it's just a character, like maybe just hopping on the spot, doing nothing, then that's fine. Then I just fit them to the scene as necessary. But yeah, if they're, if they're interacting with things, like they have to come through a door, naturally I gotta know, where is the door? What does it look like? How big is the door? Can they fit through the door? Will they slam into the door? <laughs> and can the door open? <laughs> so it's important to like, yeah, to get, get the scene done first, so that way, or the background's done first, so you know how the, how the character works in that scene, yeah. Yeah, the same thing works in 3D animation as well, because while Source Filmmaker has a bunch of pre-made maps that you can use to set your characters in your scene, there are maps out there that are completely blank, and you put your models in there and do a scene build, and then you build the background, not from scratch, but from a whole bunch of models that you have collected. And that greatly determines what the characters in the scene are actually going to be doing. Actually, uh, a question that's related to 3D animation is, uh, like, you can have the background and the characters, but do you do, um, do you set up the lighting uh, before you do animation, or do you do that after animation? You set up the lights and the uh, I've seen a lot of people do lighting before they animate. I usually do the lighting after the scene is fully animated, because my computer can't handle the lighting when it's, when I, when it's already set, so I do the lighting after most of the animation's done. Sense. Uh, new question. Uh, that far right? Nope. So, um, what projects that you yourself or someone scrapped are the ones you look at? Uh, projects that we've been a part of that have been scrapped or like, yeah. uh, had, oh, been scrapped. Um, yeah, uh, one of the ones was, was there was going to be a new Desert thing called Samus Desert thing. And I was really looking forward to doing that. I was I did some like preliminary stuff. I was going to like, try some new stuff with a new program and everything, but unfortunately, the writer fell through, <laughs> didn't want to do it anymore, and so I didn't want to continue the Desert thing by myself because it just didn't feel right because it was our thing. So unfortunately, that meant, you know, the Samus cartoon basically was shelves, which is sad because I really wanted to do a Samus thing because I got into Metroid, I think, only a couple of years ago, and I feel so bad that it's like, it's this really awesome character and this really awesome, like, thing I wanted to do. I still want to come back and do it, I mean, maybe not as it does a thing, but maybe as a separate cartoon, a separate idea that's not the same as that one. Different but names. Different name to it, yeah. Samus goes to the pizza store and buys gum. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you tell us the, the price of the gum and the brand of the gum. Yes. No, there'll be no plot holes at all. How many, how many pieces of gum did she eat? 
How did she get the gum into her helmet? That's actually an important question. <laughs> That's a mystery. I, I need to know the name of the cashier. Yeah. I need to know the backstory of the cashier. How did the cashier get to work that day? Okay, expect this, expect this cartoon in like, uh, by the year 2030. Yeah. I'll, I'll have it done by then, but I, I want to make, yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll make a Samus slash Metroid. It a one hour cartoon to like completely understand the scene of her buying a piece of gum. We need to know the entire backstory of this scene. It's just gotta be, Samus walks in, it's about to buy, and then it pauses. I just walk in going, as you can see here. <laughs> just so you know, the cashier's name is Phil, and she has exactly $3.75, but as you'll see, she won't have enough. Watch. And I get off stage. <laughs> She'll go for it, you don't have enough change. As you can see, he reacted poorly. <laughs> he did not like that she did not have the right amount of change for her purchase. Yeah. Just get a green screen. Just like have yourself like actually walk like like with the animation behind you. That'd be great. Like do it like a like, groove where you like take out a sharpie and you're like taking notes and like explaining the scene in detail. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So at some point in the next thirty years, I'll have this. I'll do eventually do a Metroid cartoon, hopefully. But that's but, but I'm still disappointed that never got like then that never got off the ground. I mean. Uh, a project that was cancelled for me, well, probably a lot of people know about the uh, Equestria Primates we were doing. It was going to be like a huge project, and uh, we got like the uh, first five minutes done in like a trailer. Uh, but it turned out it was just a little too big and ambitious for what I can actually do. I mean, like, I can, I have the ability to make it. It's just, uh, I have too much other work in order to like justify making a very, very long animation that would be about an hour and a half. So it's a little too big, a little too big of a project. So that's why we kind of just, we started to scrap that or at least put it on indefinite hiatus and uh, just go back to doing like more simple Rainbow Dash Presents. That way we can, you know, still keep doing the, the thing that everyone loves, but just keep it a little bit more in a manageable pace. Uh, it's because I'm so quick at making SFM videos, I can get pretty far in a project before it gets canceled. So. I like. I was working on a uh, parody version of the one of the Bioshock Infinite trailers, and I canceled it. Like, I don't know. This was this was a few months ago, but I only got like 30, 30 seconds in, and I just decided this is gonna be. I don't, it, it was a dumb idea, and it was just something that I didn't want to pursue any further. So I just closed the project. Did you say that you file? <laughs> oh, meta references to the previous panel. Okay, let's get more questions. New question? Out the back there? Yes? Other mediums that we... Uh, can you say that one more time? Oh, other mediums that we use to portray our art. Um, other mediums. Other uh, mediums what we are currently using or Okay, yeah. Um sock puppets? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> interpretive dance. That'd be a lot easier to animate if you use sock puppets. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Samus. <laughs> I heard you do not have enough change. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um I, I actually don't really have any other medium. I mean mostly it's been like through 2D animation. Um I've tried to use 3D animation some it's not very E for everyone. Do it. Do it anyway. Let me finish my let me finish my answer first. <laughs> Stop embarrassing me, Dad. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I actually don't using other mediums. Like I've been meaning to try to do like three D as well. Like I did that. I, I I learned that through university, but I never got back to it. Which you know, I I I did actually try a bit of um like uh, Source Filmmaker as well. Briefly, I managed to make Derpy say something, and I'm like, yes, that's awesome. And then I put it away, <laughs> and I've never come back to it. But I want to. I want. I'd love to do more stuff. <laughs> For a hundred gems. Yes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> we have to actually make sure because I'm not going to have a parent yell at me because of you. <laughs> okay, children, hide your parents. <laughs> they they may think that you don't know what these words are already. So, no, um, but seriously, does anybody not want to play this? There's just it's one or just, two words. It's just a D word. You know. Raise your hand if you do not want us to play it. Please say it now. Don't come yell at me later tonight. You know the thing that beavers build. That that. Word. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That, Are you all alright with that? Okay. You're we'll to blame. Or well, that or Dave, but either way. <laughs> blame Dave. Alright, I've got all the orbs and talismans I need. And now to defeat Riptal. <laughs>
Oh, how do I... Cross, ah! my dear boy? Well, over 100 gems, I can get you a bridge. Mm, yes. 100? Fine. Okay, I guess. Man, what a tight one. Ugh. What the... What? What is this? Why, it's a door. A locked one at that. Mm -hmm. But you would just... I just... you. I saw you and... A key you would require. Just a measly... I don't know. A hundred gems. Seriously? <laughs> Fine. Here. <laughs> Cannot believe that. What? What the f- You seem to be in a bind. Well, for another 500 gems, I can... <laughs> ha ha ha. for everyone. Fine. Here. Take it. You cheap... That wasn't very everyone, but here you go. Finally! Oh, it's beautiful! Hello, my dear boy! God ah, damn it! <laughs> Fantastic. Just the writing was so on point, and it was just so much fun just getting all those reactions like that. <laughs> 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 just like that. And fun fact, that little, poor little, like, uh, firefly-like guy going flying in, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> My only role in the entire thing. Aside, aside from the end, I had to take several takes of that one time. Funnily enough, was saying like, you know, oh, oh, thank you. He's being handed money, oh my gosh, oh. what's happening? It's his money. Oh, uh, yes, I'm being paid, oh. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, okay. Keep being funny, just keep doing it. Um, yeah, that, but, like, I was a little thing, and I, I think I only did like a few takes of that, and one of them was like, someone texted me during it, and I'm like, ah, it's fire, I'm dying, and someone's trying to text me, and I can't do this, this is it's really annoying, and now. Uh... It, it was my only role in the entire thing, but it was, it was a lot of fun. But I, I suppose, going back to your question, aside from other mediums, um, I've been meaning to try other mediums, like 3D and so forth, but mainly it's, it's, just, it's 2D. It's, it's what I have grew up with, it's what I'm interested in and trying to learn more about. Yeah, I've dabbled in 2D animation before, then I, 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 I can't really draw like that, so I don't. And, you know, like... Like what he said, but inverted. I did 3D animation for a long time, and I'm just gonna stick with it. If, if I can actually ask, uh, who voiced the the bear for that? Uh, that was uh, that was Cy, the writer. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did he did a fantastic job. Yeah, really. The whole time I'm just like, oh, this guy is fantastic. Yeah, voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wait, what was the question? Oh yeah, other mediums of track. Um, yeah, I've uh, worked a little bit in Flash. It's not uh, something I. Um, have used for Rainbow Dash Presents or other things, but I have done um, like animation projects in Flash. It's just, uh, it's really frustrating to learn Flash. It's a really, it, it's a program that wants to fight you every step of the way, and uh, you have to get like a whole bunch of third-party plugins to make it work a little bit more smoothly. So uh, I'm, I'm still learning Flash. I've learned how to make a, like a good puppet. So that's, that's a good. Okay, we need part. to fight that. Yeah. Can we do that? All right, everybody, ready? Three, two, one. Take that. We're louder than you are. Yeah, continue. Do your thing. <laughs>